Welcome everyone to this latest tutorial. We're going to be showing you how you can set up your own viral OpenStack cluster. So this is now the ability to scale beyond just a single viral server, have multiple computers working together to give you uh, the ability to bring larger amounts of compute resources to your simulations. So what does a cluster actually give us? What we have is the ability to now use, as I mentioned, multiple computers running within a single managed system, the cluster, and that's where we're going to be able to distribute our virtual machines. So rather than having all of our virtual machines running on our single viral server as we've had up to now, we can now take our systems, and even though we have our various networks designed between all the various nodes, um, that is then distributed, all the virtual networking distributed, and the virtual machines that you're running, again, distributed across the compute hosts, the controller nodes that you have running within your cluster. So we're going to discuss all of these in more detail and also give you a walkthrough. With this release, um, this is April 2016, we will be able to scale up to five computers running within a cluster. You can mix and match the compute resources, meaning that the CPUs, the amount of memory, and obviously the amount of disk that you have across those various computers can be mixed. It doesn't all have to be uniform, um, but obviously you need to pay attention to the kinds of CPU, the amount of memory that you have available, um, because obviously if you've got you know, top-end uh, CPUs running on some compute class, uh, some compute nodes, and lower-end CPUs running on others. You're going to get differences in performance, so you need to pay attention to this. Um, you know, obviously, if you can afford to have uh, a nice set of high-end uh, devices that you're running in your cluster, you know, fantastic. But chances are you're going to have some uh, mixture of of CPU and memory, and that's absolutely fine. That that's not a problem. So we need to talk about some basics. Let's start off talking about the controller and then we'll cover the compute nodes. So what is a controller? This is effectively the management head end, the head node um, that's running the cluster. This is the thing that we're going to be talking to. This is where all of our viral software that you're used to using every day, that is where that is all running. This is where you would point, uh, if you're using VM Maestro, that's where you'd be pointing it to. If you're using the UWM web interface, that's where this is running. So this is just a standard viral server, which has been uh, reconfigured slightly. It's not a huge amount of reconfiguration work required. Reconfigured to operate as that cluster controller. And as I said, this is then the device which we will be using to manage the, the cluster. Let's take a look at the compute nodes. Okay, so what are these compute nodes? They are not using standard viral software. They have a much, much simpler cut down set of software that's installed. Um, we provide specific installation images for each compute node. So for compute one, two, three, four, you will find an individual installation image. Um, so obviously if you've got, uh, let's say a compute cluster of compute one and compute two, you wanna make sure that you're installing the correct image for that controller. It would not make sense to say, hey, um, I've got two devices, Compute 1 and Compute 2, and try and install the Compute 2 image on both. Uh, not a good idea. Um, so you want to install the correct compute node image for each one. On each one of those compute nodes, what do you actually have? Well, it's standard Linux, so we're using Ubuntu. And we have then on top of it, um, KVM for running our virtual machines and some of the OpenStack components. Now, whereas, uh, if you look at the OpenStack components that are running on your controller, you'll see a number of different services. There are only two which are running on our compute nodes. That's Nova and Linux Bridge. Okay, so it's quite normal. You'll only see Nova and Linux Bridge running on those compute nodes. The compute nodes do need internet access. They do also need a valid NTP signal. So depending on where you're installing, you may need to work with your lab team just to figure out uh, where you have, uh, your, which NTP source you should be using. And similarly with the internet access, if you're behind proxies, uh, again, you'll need to work with your lab team to figure out uh, what the appropriate configuration is for, for your proxy setup. So that's very, very important. The compute nodes themselves do require disk. Um, because they will be caching virtual machine disk images uh, as you spin up your simulations. So we recommend at least 40 gigs um, available to each one of the compute nodes. That's, that's sort of you know, a, a safe number. All right, now let's take a look at the networking elements. The 
networking. We need to provide connectivity between all of the various devices, the controller and up to four of our compute nodes, as we've mentioned. So we have the various networks that we have available today. Um, the management network, that's how we communicate directly to uh, each one of the devices. And then FLAT, FLAT1, SNAT, and INT. And the INT network becomes increasingly, what's actually vitally important when we're working with OpenStack clusters. With the INT, we are using a set of IP addresses that we really suggest you do not change. So the controller is configured to come up at the 10 to 50 network. And you can see here in the diagram, uh, 241, 242, 243, 244 um, being proposed for the Compute 1, Compute 2, Compute 3, and Compute 4 nodes. And when you actually install your images, these IP addresses are already there. Please, please, please do not try to reconfigure this and change the controller network around to something different. Uh, it's not recommended. It's not supported. Um, please stick to that. The flat network, uh, you can reconfigure this. Out of the box, out of the installation image, so to speak, um, we have, again, built up these standard IP addresses. So the controller sitting at the one network, 172.16.1.254, and we've reserved 241, 242, 243, 244, respectively, for each one of the compute nodes. And again, all of these devices need to be attached to each other. They must be on a common network. Same applies for flat 1. So here we're into the 172.16.2 network. And again, you can see the common IP addressing theme. Same for SNAT. Again, 172.16.3 network being used uh, and the, the addressing as you've seen before. So as I said, the internal network, the, the controller network, that 172.16.10 network, please do not reconfigure that. But with flat 1, Sorry, with FLAT, FLAT1 and SNAT, you can reconfigure those IP addresses to suit your networking needs. When we look at ESXi installations, so imagine that you've got an ESXi uh, system or an ESXi cluster. Um, rather than using physical networking, you're going to be using ESX, uh, ESXi's vSwitch configuration to provide that connectivity. Uh, we're not going to go into details about how you connect, connect between multiple hosts within an ESXi cluster. Okay, there's plenty of material from uh, VMware on how to do that. But again, you need to provide connectivity between all of the various compute nodes that you have within your configuration, within your cluster. So you would have one network that you're using for your management purposes. So this is the Ethernet Zero network. Maybe there's a DHCP server running there, maybe using static IP. Again, that's all kind of standard uh, installation requirements there. And again, you will have created or you may already have in existence um, a set of vSwitches that you're going to or a vSwitch instance that you're going to use for the flat, flat one, SNAT and INT networks. So if we look at an ESXi vSwitch network diagram, so here you can see on the left hand side, so if I were to bring up a new vSwitch instance and create uh, a port group for each of the networks for FLAT, FLAT1, SNAT and INT, you can see that on the left hand side. And then when we actually uh, got our virtual machines deployed, so I've actually brought up each one of my instances in uh, on top of my ESXi cluster. Here we can see we've got ports into the port group um, for each one of my compute nodes. So the controller, the compute one, the compute two in this diagram. And again, you know, each one of those devices has a network interface into the flat, flat one, SNAT and int networks respectively. OK, let's get on to the installation. Here we have a summary of the steps involved in the installation. We've talked about the network connectivity, so obviously you need to get that connectivity set up before we start the deployment. So if we are working with physical equipment, that means getting hold of a switch, setting up the appropriate uh, LANs or VLANs. If you're working with ESXi, then obviously setting up the appropriate vSwitch connectivity, uh, and that's all covered in uh, other viral documentation. We're going to be setting up our controller, so that's a fresh viral server. We do not recommend trying to convert an existing viral server that you have. Better to start off with a fresh viral server. Going to configure that to operate as the controller. Once that's done, it's going to be the case of installing however many compute nodes you're going to be bringing up in your cluster, somewhere between one and four, as we've uh, discussed earlier. 
Once those controller uh, compute nodes, sorry, uh, are up, it's then rebooting the controller that then initializes everything, and we confirm our operation, and then we're ready to run our simulations. So we're going to start off taking a look at setting up our viral server and configuring that as a controller. So I've deployed a fresh viral server and it's licensed and now I've logged into the server and I'm going to make a copy of my viral INI file just as a backup and then I'm going to edit my viral INI file. So I'm searching for the line that says cluster so we should find there it is viral underscore cluster and I'm going to change that value from false to true. And if each one of the compute nodes that I'm going to be setting up, and in my case I'm setting up four compute nodes, each one has to be activated. So compute one underscore active, compute two underscore active, three underscore active, etc. You get the idea. Okay, so all we're doing is just changing that false statement to true. That's the last one. So now we can just save that and exit. And now we have a sequence of commands to run. First of all, vinstall, vinstall, vinstall salt, and then we're going to get a lengthy command that's going to run in a moment. So here we go. So that's now sudo salt dash call state dot sls common dot salt dash master dot cluster. Now what this is doing is setting up an internal salt master that's going to serve the compute nodes within my cluster. One more, sudo salt dash call state.sls viral.hostname.cluster without the typo. And then the last command which is vinstall salt. And we're done. So now I'm logged in into UWM and into the system configuration panel and we now have four new panels which have appeared, one for each of the compute nodes that I'm going to be bringing up. So here we can see the settings for each one of the devices. Now the values here should be aligned to what's actually going to be deployed on the compute nodes. So because we're sort of using out of the box, these are the pre-assigned IP addresses. So remember we can alter the various IP addresses if we want but we mustn't touch the control network, okay? So the, the 172.16.10 network should be left alone. So I spun up one of my compute nodes. So this is the first one, compute one, and we're logging in. And there are a few things that we want to take a look at. So because there's a fresh OVA that's come up, it's going to have the predefined uh, IP addresses. So we can see that in slash Etsy network interfaces. So there we are, the 241 IP address being used from this compute node. And in the home directory, we're looking for the .ssh directory. So that must be there in the home directory for the user. We also want to just check NTP. So sudo ntp-q, and there we can see one in star state, so we're in sync. And I just want to ping. So that's going across the control Ethernet network to the controller. And then a salt ping, so sudo salt call test.ping. And that's true, so everything is looking good. So now we can just go ahead and repeat that for each compute node. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and reboot the controller itself. So I've rebooted the controller and I've logged back in. And then we want to check a few things. So first of all, the commands Nova service dash list. And I should see for each one of my compute hosts an entry in there. And you should be seeing them in the enable state and up. We also want to look at Nova hypervisor dash list. And again, we should see an entry for each one of the compute states. Now, if we end up with one which is in down, typically a reboot will solve that. One last check, neutron agent dash list. And again, here we should see an entry again for each one of the compute nodes. So Linux bridge agent is the only agent service that should be running on those nodes. If we go into UWM, we now should see an entry for each one of the four compute nodes. And under the VM control table, if we go under hosts, we should again see an entry for each one of our compute. So we can use this interface to check if you prefer not to use the CLI interface. And we can also run from the system status, we can run a either the system health check 
or a systems operations check just to make sure where all the functions or the services are indeed working. So I'm going to kick off a, a systems operation check and we're just going to watch and make sure that all of the functionality is indeed working. Now one of the reasons to use the systems operations check is as part of it, it will spin up a simulation. So that means we're spinning up our sets of virtual machines. It's also then checking the networking function. And that's crucial when we're operating in our cluster because obviously we've got network segments spanning between compute nodes. Now specifically, there is a section there you can see towards the bottom called cluster test. This was a specific set of tests to run the virtual machines on each one of the compute nodes. So there's a positive check to make sure that each one of the compute hosts is indeed working and uh, ready for our simulations. So that's all completed and I'm going to log in and I'm going to start up my simulation. So I've started up my simulation and as we wait we will see the virtual machine starting to come up. We can see some entries are there with external connectivity so that's running on the local controller. We can see the distribution here under VM control nodes and we can see where each one of those virtual machines has been placed. So we can see those are being distributed across our compute nodes. Now because they're being distributed across we can't necessarily use the direct external connectivity method which goes through the controller. Um, we do have via the WebSocket method our console. So again, through UWM, we can log in. So here I am logged into node three. We can see the simulation coming up, uh, the operating system booting in that virtual machine. And if we wait a moment, we should see uh, BGP sessions and OSPF sessions starting to come up. So there we are, BGP is up. But if the WebSocket method isn't viable, there is another way that we can get in which is to connect into our management LXC and then from the management LXC we can then connect using the internal management IPs. So you can use your secure CRT or PuTTY or ITERM to be able to connect into your management LXC and then from there connect across. So here I've SSH'd from there to node 3 and we're using the management IP network to get into the nodes which and in this case your know, node 3 is actually running on one of the compute nodes. So just going to show uh, live visualization running. So again on my simulation, here we have the live viz up and running. And again, this is just proving that all of our functionality is working across our cluster. Um, so we're going to change the view, take a look at OSPF. There it is, IBGP. And we need to bear in mind that each one of the compute instances, sorry, each one of the virtual machine instances we see here is distributed across our different compute hosts. Um, so we can see all of the functionality, syslog, etc., you know, working as, as if you were running on a, a, a single system, as if this was running on the standalone. 